right, it's now three minutes after eight o'clock and uh, it's time for us to get into your health. And today I am joined by Ms. Eva Nyoike, who is the founder of Acon Special Tutorials. Thank you for joining us, uh, Ms. Eva. And we'll get straight into it. And maybe you can just start by, for the benefit of those watching, telling us what um, Acon Special Tutorials is all about. Okay, Acon Special Tutorials is a program for persons with um, neurodiversities. Mm -hmm. Um, otherwise known as uh, intellectual disabilities. And it's a program that uh, offers early intervention program, uh, vocational and uh, remedial education. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, I do know that uh, the International Day of Persons with Disability <laughs> is uh, one that's coming up. But when we talk about disability, majority of us, I think, normally go straight into physical disability. Yes. Is yes. that an accurate way of looking at it? Um, it's not an accurate way of looking at it, but it's the way that people know disability because it's, it is something that is obvious, it's visible. it's visible. Yeah, it's visible. If you think of a person with physical disability, you're looking at polio, you're looking at people on wheelchairs. Um, you can also look at a person with a physical disability who is blind. So mm -hmm. we are looking at blindness because you are seeing the person is either wearing shades or the person is using a white cane, um, hearing impaired also, which is visible. You can mm. see a hearing aid or you can see somebody signing. Yeah, so those are the visible ones. Those are the visible ones. Yes. However, of course, there are those other disabilities that are more subtle. Yes, mm. those ones we call um, invisible mm. or right now we are calling them emerging disabilities because right, people emerging. are getting emerging. They are, okay. they are actually emerging. People are getting aware mm. and they are becoming more informed about them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also, what I, I, I prefer to call it neurodiversity. That means neuro, the brain, is different from the regular, a typical person. Mm. So under that condition of neurodiversity, we have conditions like autism, we have conditions like attention deficit hyperactive disorder, we have conditions like emotional and behavior disorder. Mm -hmm. The we, likes of bipolar? Uh, bipolar is a, is a disease, is a medical condition, mm -hmm. um, which with medication, the it person, can be... it can be taken, managed. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, th that's why we say condition because it's something that is lifelong. Right. Yeah. It's something that doesn't go away. Mm. So the other, the other neurodiversity that we tend to really ignore is gifted and talented mm -hmm. children who are really super smart in school. Um, cause they also have an issue. They are not able to cope with the a typical mainstream curriculum that is provided for them. Okay. So those are all invisible. There's nothing physical about the children that mm -hmm. will indicate that they have uh, a learning disability. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now let's concentrate more on the children because that's where we would do ourselves a good favor if we first of all identified and secondly were equipped to know how to deal with it. Let's start with autism. Mm -hmm. um, what exactly is autism? Because I think that's, that's an area that very many people misunderstand, particularly those who socialize with autistic children but are not their parents or are not you know, in their family. Yeah. yeah. Autism is a very, um, I can say, unique neurodiversity because, as I said, neuro, the brain, these are children whose brain function in a very Different. different way mm. um, they will have um, a, they will they, they will have a different way of for example um, communicating mm -hmm. so you'll find that they don't have speech and language a lot of them if they do it is mainly echolalia though if echolalia means parroting what you're saying so if you say hi Mike they'll say hi Mike mm. yeah come here come here let's go let's go so they they don't use language the way we use language they'll communicate by holding your hand and taking you to what they want um, they're very visual learners so whatever they see they memorize they mm. remember mm. yeah so they also have um, issues with they, they, they act differently in regards to social skills so a lot of times the parent will think that they are deaf because they're not responding to, to what you're saying 
Um, you can, they can be busy doing their own thing, but if you call them, they will not respond to you. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times there's a misdiagnosis of deafness, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then, um, so there's the social skills, and then a lot of times what they have is repetitive behavior and obsessive behavior. So they'll be running up and down or flapping their hands, yeah? And um, they seem to be in a world of their own. In a world of their yeah. own. How, yeah. how early in their upbringing is it possible to identify autism? Because some of the, the, the features you're mentioning are probably of one who has you know, grown up a bit. But how early in their growth are we able to identify autism? Usually by about two years, between two and three years, you can be able to identify. Why? Because that's the time that language is developing. And a lot of children with, with autism will realize that their language is delayed. Mm -hmm. the, de the accusation of language is delayed. And then also it's when they start playing around, you know, the, the terrible twos, mm -hmm. you'll notice that their play is a bit different. Yeah, they want to be by themselves or they, and, and when they're playing, for example, with a car, they will just take the car and just spin the wheel mm -hmm. instead of actually playing with it. Right. Or if they have toys, they will be putting, they, they may put all the toys in, in a line instead mm -hmm. of actually appropriately p playing with the toys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there, there will be, the, uh, those signs should be enough to say, let me have my child have, have checked. My child checked. Yeah. But of course, that's not to say if a child has delayed speech, that necessarily that proves that they're autistic. Yes. Okay. You have to have very many other things mm. that, yeah. So how does one now move from just uh, suspecting that they're autistic to mm -hmm. possibly now identifying? Because the reason that becomes important is you may want to bring this child up with that knowledge so yeah. that you give them the right environment and the right, um, you know, schooling that they need. Mm. I always tell parents, if you suspect, and the, 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 the interesting thing is, the parents will always think, ah, oh, there's something not right with my child. Because they will, they, they, we tend, parents tend to compare. They tend to compare children. And uh, if you feel, as a parent, that oh, there's something different with my child, it's always best to go and have the child checked. You may go to the doctor, especially if it's a boy, and I'm not saying doctors are not good about this, but mm. the doctor may tell you, give the child some time. Mm. I would uh, sincerely ask parents, that time that you're giving the child could have been time that you'd be doing an intervention for that child mm. and making a difference. So it's better to be safe than sorry. Just let's have the ch child checked. Okay. Yeah. And what's the procedure of having that child checked? Is there a special, you know, like, um, do you go to a pediatrician? Yes. What we do, what, what, what I recommend parents to do is um, the pediatrician is good. But, uh, for example, if you are within a hospital where there are, uh, there's a therapy, uh, an occupational therapist, for example, or uh, we call them EACs, which are the educational resource uh, centers, mm -hmm. a child can get an assessment. You take them, if, uh, if in doubt, take them to KISE, Kenya Institute of Special Education. They have a huge assessment center there. Mm -hmm. um, Kenyatta Hospital, the child can go to the uh, pediatric um, uh, unit and they can be assessed there. Any assessment center would assist, would, would assist in identifying what's going on with the child, and they will also give you recommendations on what to do. Okay. Yeah. We'll come to ADHD uh, in just a bit, but still on autism, there are two things I'd like us to maybe demystify. Number one is to do with food. Is it true that autistic children require a special diet? Okay. That, that is very gen it's generalized. Um, what happens is that since autism is a condition that is still under um, research, we are not able to pinpoint exactly what has caused the autism. However, there are some children, and this is not the, it doesn't cut across all children with autism. There are some children who will manifest a metabolic disorder. And with this metabolic disorder, it is connected the, the gut and the brain. Mm -hmm. So the best uh, intervention for that is diet. So once we change the diet of this, of the child, and we eliminate uh, wheat products because of a protein called um, gluten. gluten. And we eliminate all dairy products because of a protein in the milk called casein. And then we eliminate all sugars, anything sweet, you know, sugar, sodas, artificial colorings, sweeteners, all those things. We eliminate that from the diet. 
This is because the, the child's um, gut is not able to break down the gluten and the casein. The sugar is fuel to the hyperactivity because mm. a lot of children with autism also have hyper are also uh, hyperactive. hyperactive. Mm. Yeah. So yes, there are some children, depending on the genesis of their uh, autism, mm -hmm. for example, that it's related to a metabolic disorder. So those children will greatly benefit from um, eliminating um, the, the foods that I have mentioned. But it doesn't work for all children. Mm. So, so one needs to actually get special um, tests done so that you can establish what works for my child. Not necessarily, uh, because the tests are expensive and how many parents can afford, can afford that. Mm. So usually we just th go through elimination. And you say, for example, let's eliminate these foods for a given period of time. Then we observe the child's um, behavior. Mm. If there is a change, we can go ahead and just maintain the diet. If there's no change, then it means that the child doesn't, it's not it's a not metabolic, a yeah, mm. it's not a diet related mm. issue. Yeah. Okay, there's also the question that comes up, especially when it comes to autism on medicines. Okay. And apparently there are some who feel, or there has been reports written out there, I don't know how genuine they are or how true they are or accurate, that there's some medicines that may cause autism, particularly for younger children. I think what you would be referring to is probably the vaccines. Correct. Isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, there's still, again, so, a, a lot of research going on with that. There are people who say it doesn't cause at all. Yet there is a lot of research that says, yes, there's evidence. So it's a very tricky um, area. Uh, area mm. Because if we say that, especially if we say it on TV, mm. parents will not take their children for immunization because they'll be scared that their child will get autism. But um, let's just say there's quite a bit of research that is going on. There is, as I said, evidence that it has caused, but um, there's, there, there, there's more, the research saying that it doesn't cause is a little bit more, mm. and again, it's political it's because, political. yeah. Okay, um, so I guess that that will leave for parents, particularly who feel that children may need to be checked to have that, you know, expert expert advice. Yeah. Let's come to ADHD, another very misunderstood. You called it what neurodiversity. Neurodiversity. Uh, and uh, maybe let's start just just defining what ADHD is, because I know there are parents who may have children with ADHD and either think their children are just, you know, uh, too, yeah, just naughty and uncontrollable. Yeah. ADHD is uh, it, attention deficit hyperactive disorder. So that means the child does not attend. The or rather, span. you can say the child attends to everything <laughs> <laughs> other than what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. So the attention span is very, very short. Okay. So the attention, so there's inattention, then Attention deficit, that means it's not, it's there. not there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then hyperactive. So what happens with these children is that they just can't sit still. They are all over catching, trying, exploring, climbing, doing a lot of things. Even as an adult, mm. it is manifested in a different way. But as children, it's a hyperactive. You know the, the bunny, is it the energizer bunny that mm -hmm. is all over the place? Yes, the one that yes. advertises some battery. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, a child with um, ADHD. ADHD. That's a child that at home you will say, sit down, watch a panya eat, stop doing this, this. They can't help themselves. Their brain is on... Overdrive. Overdrive, yeah. So they are very hyperactive. It's when you, I tell teachers in schools, when you're telling the child to sit or to stop rocking, you're, you're actually, I, I tell them, imagine that that child has some, uh, has safari ants on their bum. Mm. So they can't sit. Mm. They will have to try they'll and, have to keep yes, they'll have to keep, and exactly. To... So they are, and then hyperactive, and then they're very impulsive. They want to finish things quickly. Yeah, these are children that maybe uh, a teacher will come into class and say, good morning class, what happened? Even before the teacher has finished speaking, their hands are hand up. up. So when you ask, yes, what, what it is, they say, ah, uh, I forgot, <laughs> you know? So they are impulsive, they try and finish, they can't wait in line. They, want, they, they can't, they, they want to finish things quickly and that makes uh, results to them not quite doing 
things the way Properly. everybody else is exactly. doing things. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Mm. And once you've identified, because I think the, 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 the challenge comes in because the parent, like you mentioned, uh, suffers comparison. And you could be comparing either with your other children or with other children, you know, well, yeah. depending on the space. Mm. How does one identify the ADHD as opposed to just a child who is in a very good mood today and, you know, because that happens yes. where they are all over. Is there a, spe a specific way of identifying ADHD? Yes, what you do, um, before even you get that diagnosis, these behaviors should have been manifested for at least six months, mm -hmm. yeah? And to a point where it is actually considered um, not not, uh, I should not say not normal, but it should, it's considered a problem. The ADHD, the attention, the distract, being distracted, easily distracted, the hyperactivity, impulsivity, is something that has been identified in all, let's say, all spaces that the child is in, school, church, mosque, um, uh, playground, home outings, whatever, they have seen those behaviors for at least six months. Mm. Then at that point, it is important to get a diagnosis. Usually you can get this diagnosis from, from a, a pediatrician, yeah? Get the, or even the, the assessment centers, get the diagnosis. Because once a parent has the diagnosis, it actually helps the parent to be a better parent to the child. Otherwise, the child will end up being punished and being in trouble all the time. All the time. Yeah. Mm. So once the parent understands that, oh, this is actually a condition, and this, I, I have a lot to do with it in regards now to modifying the environment, the, environment, the, the diet also, mm. and your attitude also as a parent. Um, then that way, it, it, it really makes a big difference. Okay. I wanted to talk, take a short commercial break. When we come back, let's talk solutions. Let's talk how do we make their space better and ensure that we um, you know, have them learn at their best and also develop them to be what they should be because one of the things, of course, is that we'll try to mold them to become what they may not be by virtue of the fact that we're comparing or trying to make them like other children. So we take a short break, but do stay with us with Miss Eva Nyoike. When we come back, let's talk solutions solutions for what uh, we have now learned is neurodiversity. We take a break, we'll be right back. This is KTN News. Kenya's culture is best described through its diverse cultural dining experiences. Amaika Restaurant offers this unique experience in an exceptional, elegant setting. We welcome you on this exciting tour. On this week's episode, we'll be focusing on uh, foods or traditional food that are close to extinction. And one of them has been Daga, then we have Bambara Nags. <laughs> this is locally made peanut sauce. Exactly, yes. But the wild traditional mushroom only grows once a year. In a tokanga wakat, musimo wa mwazuwaini, kama mvoikomi. Yeah, very nutritious in you know, provision of uh, macronutrients like like the protein. The skill to produce, to prepare the food, that is a factor that we must consider. Amaika restaurant offers this unique experience in an exceptional, elegant setting. Welcome you on this exciting tour. Eneo la North Rift na jione ya fahari kutokana na ukwasi mkubwa ufugaji, kilimo cha maindi na pia miwa. Hapa ndipo, tunapuangazia changamoto na manufaa ya kilimo. 
Kilimo cha miwando uti wa mgongo wa uchumi eneo la Magharibi licha kwamba kilimo hicho kinapitia changamoto mbalimbali na pia eneo hili ni maarufu zaidi kutokana na uchimbaji wa madini hasa dhahabu na kwa ukanda ambao una tofauti za misimamo ya kisiasa ungana nami kila siku kuanzia Jumatatu hadi Ijumaa kwenye leo mashinani niweza kufahamisha hayo na mengine mengi mbashara When you attack a cabinet secretary, you are directly attacking the president. You can't come to Central and tell us that uh, we do not deserve uh, this or that because we hold the presidency. We don't even need the president. But we cannot afford to be in a continuous mode of election campaigning. Kinyate is under attack from his own forces. There are forces that are trying to undermine his work. It has become fashionable. For those who are politically and uh, morally bankrupt, they have no ideas to use money as a tool of uh, getting support. If you were to have one-on-one uh, -on -one with Uhuru Kenyatta, what would you be telling uh, him? I'll tell Uhuru, my friend, you must stop the theft in this country. Why are we then spending our time 24-7 discussing individuals in 2022 rather than focusing and debating on matters of development in the region? This is KTN News. All right, it's now 25 minutes after 8, and in case you're joining us now, it's your health, and today we are talking about neurodiversity, particularly on children, and this presents itself in, uh, you know, areas like autism and ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. So we've talked about identifying and, you know, uh, checking for, children, uh, for parents to identify whether their children actually do have some of these neurodiversities. How do we deal with it now that we have known that they have? those, um, you know, uh, ways of uh, their, their brains operate differently. Okay. The first and most important thing is actually creating awareness um, and uh, understanding that these conditions exist. It doesn't have to be physical, but um, our children have a different way of perceiving information, perceive interacting with, with others, playing, and creating that awareness within the community, the, 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 the society at large. Because what is going on right now, we have the new curriculum, the CBC curriculum. And with the CBC curriculum, it states that no child should be left behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And that means that our, these children with neurodiversity will be in the classes. So how will we address that? We will right. address that by empowering the teachers training them, getting them out. It's a totally new paradigm shift where they have to now not just plan for one style of teaching, they have to plan for different styles, way, of, styles teaching of teaching and learning, and learning for right. the children because the children learn differently. Yeah, So creating that awareness, sensitizing the, um, the, the general public, um, and then equipping parents and teachers on how now to 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 work with with uh, and bring up their children mm. yeah okay yeah. and uh, once we now have this uh, what advice would you give to those who possibly have children with these uh, diversities in regards to creating safe spaces for them yeah. where they can feel encouraged where they can feel they are let loose to be themselves yes you know, a lot of times if you go places, you'll hear, oh, um, so-and-so has a child and they're keeping them at home. They're locking them at home. Or you'll go and you'll hear, uh, there'll be a call, cry out at a function here or there saying, don't lock your children at home, mm. bring them out. The question I always ask is, where are we bringing them out to? Mm -hmm. Who is out there to receive them? Yeah? If you who is out there to receive children who have neurodiversity. If you have a positive attitude towards, the, to, towards these children, the children will be brought out. Mm. But if already, as a parent is walking with their child who's probably on a wheelchair, has cerebral palsy, looks different, or, or a child with autism who's running all over the place, or a child with ADHD, 
The first thing is that we condemn the mother or the father. You say, you're a bad parent. Why are you letting your child run all over mm. the place? Put yeah? some discipline on this child. Put some di discipline on this child. If we have a parent who has a child who, is multiply, who has multiple challenges, we start looking at, it's a curse. Mm. What did you do? You were drinking during your pregnancies. You, you have sacrificed your child. We have a lot of myths. Yeah, or demon possessed. One time I was told some of my students have demons. Mm. You know, so we need to demystify neurodiversity and accept that it's just a different way of having, uh, dealing with life. Mm. Yeah, mm. I like jumping up and down and uh, I need to jump up and down once in a while. So please allow me to do that. And of course, whoever came yes. up with a template of normal, of who normal. says this is normal, yes. it's just that majority yes. may be behaving in a certain way, yes. but that does not make them normal. Yes. So society needs to have this society information. Society needs to have the information and society needs to change its attitude because you, you think about that child who's gone out there. The parents are actually protecting mm. the children from from society because society doesn't Can know it's not hostile. it's not yeah and they're not hostile because they have decided to be hostile they are hostile because they don't know what Absolutely. to do with their child and that brings me to the next point because this information is fortunately right now being consumed by our viewers yeah. but we must uh, also admit that our viewers may be very few by yeah. several reasons. One, uh, access to a television and this information. Secondly, in the rural areas, this information might not get there. Where there is a big challenge, especially because that's where our culture is very strong, myths are very strong. Yes. Uh, they're going to say that this child is possessed or yes. uh, you've been bewitched. How is this information getting to the rural areas? All right, uh, thank you for that question. I think that's a really good one. Um, we have the Beyond Zero Project, yeah? initiative. Now, within the Beyond Zero uh, initiative, uh, the First Lady has a strategic framework. Mm -hmm. Part of her strategic framework right now, since uh, what we've been doing is that we've been taking specialized services through a medical safari out there to the country. Yeah. So within the medical safari, it, it's really like a specialized hospital. We go and camp in a stadium and we have um, uh, people being screened for cancer, uh, cervical cancer, uh, post um their eyes are checked, we are looking at the elderly. And within that space, we are also registering um, children with disabilities with the National Council for Persons with Disabilities. So we have the children come in there, they are assessed, and they are registered with the National Council for Persons with Disabilities. We also have partnered with Cure International, who they, come, they, they provide um, specialized services in, in the area of orthopedics. So if we have children who require surgery, Cure International is there with us. So being out there in the country, we are also talking to the, to the parents. We are empowering them and we are connecting them with the relevant people. So. For example, we've been to Narok, mm -hmm. where we worked with the EX, the, 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 the assessment centers that I mentioned. We were with the National Council, and we were with Cure International. So as we go there, we don't go and leave. We connect them. So the children are placed in schools. The children now are recognized by the National Council. They, are, they have access to, to therapy. They have access to school, schools, yeah, to education. So within the First Ladies Framework, we are able to meet and to go to the different places. We've been to Narok, we've been to West Pokot, we've been to Nyandarwa, and we've been to Kisumu. And we are still going. We're we are, still going we are still going All right, on. and yeah. uh, maybe as we get to the winding part of this, um, we also did have the International Day of Persons with Disability that took place. What are some of the things that you feel society needs to be uh, made aware? Because like we started off by saying, when we talk about International Day of, uh, of Disability, we immediately imagine or go to physical disabilities, yes. whereas that this also needs to have some, you know, yeah. people to know what's going on. I think it's important that uh, the society first appreciates that there are other forms of disabilities. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so th we need to create awareness in regards to that. Then if we look at numbers, we've just done our census, yeah? But I'll go by the census because uh, we did not get the, the, the results of persons with disabilities this, this time around. I have not been able to get that access to that. However, the previous one indicated that we have 4.4 million Kenyans living with disabilities in our country. Mm. If we look at that as a figure, and then we look at the situation, our economic situation in Kenya. Now, do we want 4.4 people to be dependents, or do we want 4.4 people to be active, productive members of our society, of our economy? Yeah? If we look at it in that regard, it will jolt us to that realization that guess what? Yeah? We have let's to stop. Let's yeah. Let's stop thinking of persons with disabilities as that other, that other group of people that can be put aside and denied access to be able to reach their fullest potential. Mm. Why don't we look at persons with disabilities as development partners also, as people who have a lot to share in our country. They have their own gifts. They have their own talents. Why don't we open up our schools? Yeah? Why don't we open up our places of work yeah, to accommodate persons with disabilities? Mm. Why, why do we think that a person on a wheelchair can only be a good hawker, for example? What if that person is fantastic in coding? But have we given them that, that opportunity, opportunity the to, to be that. able to, mm. to, 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 sh to express what they know, mm. to be able to showcase what, what their the, the intelligence are? Mm. So what I think the important thing is, can we get to a place as a country where we are actually inclusive? Of everybody. Of everybody. I'll need, your, yeah. I'll need to wind up, but maybe for somebody who feels that they may need more advice or more information on this, where can that information be found? Where can it be found? Okay. Um, I can give them our contacts. Yes, that's, <laughs> that's in order. So they can, uh, they can uh, call ACON Special Tutorials, which is uh, 7 they can go to Kenya Institute of Special Education, KISE, which is in um, Ruaraka. They can um, go to, to the, the district hospitals where we have the occupational therapist and the physiotherapist there. They can go to the National Council for Persons with Disabilities in their, uh, at county level because they are, it's devolved, so it, the, the, the National Council is everywhere. So they can go to the National Council for Persons with Disabilities. Um, we also have special education professionals, um, so they can Google all that. All there that. are places where mm. people can go. Thank there you very much, Ms. Eva Nyoike, founder of ACON Special Tutorials, for joining us this morning and just highlighting neurodiversity in our children and as a society. We need to also include and make sure that we give them a healthy environment to grow. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. All right, we now take a look at some international news. And in Kenya's remote island communities near the border with Somalia, the threat of Al-Shabaab militants has scared away most medical personnel. But one group of volunteers, the safari doctors, is braving the danger to provide much-needed regular health care 